Live your life like you're the hero in your movie. And right now is when the fucking movie starts and your life is a shitbag disaster. You are in the part of the movie that starts and it shows you as a fucking loser. And just decide not to be a loser anymore. Live your life like there's a documentary crew following you around and you are analyzing your own behavior. Do what you would want to do so that your kids one day would look back at it and, and, and see that documentary and look on it with pride. Like, wow, my dad was a bad motherfucker. He really did what he had to do. Wow, my mom really got her shit together. I love a success story, but even more than a success story, I like a dude who fucks his life up and then gets it back together again story. Those are my favorite stories. I've never met anybody who became incredibly successful in any area of their life until they had suffered and sweated and sacrificed and kept their focus and fought through tears and trials and tests. And if you have a dream and you commit to it, it will come to pass. How much good could you do? When you don't get a miracle, be one. You can never change who you were, but you can always change who you are, and you must change who you are. And not only can you, you should. As you think, so you become. How awesome. This shows you, too, how powerful your mind is. Because everything you see, everything that's around you, everything in your life, you're creating and putting there. So that means you can create anything. Nothing is impossible. You can change your life. You can have anything in your life at all. They told me one of the biggest lessons you come to Earth to learn is how to manipulate energy. You can't get out of the Earth school and graduate till you learn how to manipulate energy. What does that mean? Create. You have to learn to create because this is how powerful your mind is. You can create anything. Somewhere deep inside, you know what kind of person you were designed to be. If you want to produce great acorns, think like an oak, not like an acorn. Think like the person you intend to become. It's like the Christian question, what would Jesus do? Ask yourself, how would the person I'd like to be do the things I'm about to do? The first million is hard, but the second million is inevitable. It's not becoming a millionaire that's important. It's the person that you must become in order to become a millionaire. Yeah. You, you, you have to become a completely different person. You have to, you have to develop character beyond 99% of the people in the world. You have to develop honesty and discipline and, and quality relationships and, and the willingness and the ability to work and set priorities and, and all kinds of stuff because without that, nothing is possible. Everything is made of energy. And when you feel a certain way, that feeling is energy in motion. We call it emotion, energy in motion. And if you have a low feeling of yourself, you're going to attract things that reinforce that energy or low feeling. So anything that comes into your life, like energy, attracts like energy. If you feel bad about yourself, you'll attract experiences that encourage you to feel bad about yourself. If you feel wealthy and healthy, you'll attract those things into your life. Everything is energy. You look where your eyes go. So look forward, don't turn around. But isn't that a metaphor for everything? You look where your eyes go, just like where your mind goes. Wherever you set your, your, your point of reference on, your, your mental attention, your focus, that is where you're going. How are you gonna have a positive life from negative thoughts? You can't. You are the universe experiencing itself from one specific perspective. Everyone you have ever met or will ever meet is also you. Every act of love is an act of self-love. Every act of hate is an act of self-hate. Every experience you have, good or bad, is a message from you to you. As a human, you exist with a physical body and mind, but they are not who you are. You can use your physical body and mind as tools to create the future, as all possibilities exist within you. All you have to do is pick a direction and move towards it with focus action. You are like a tuning fork. When you align your mind with your universal self, you will activate others to align with theirs. Life will pay whatever price you ask of it. But you know what's interesting? You gotta ask intelligently. In the Bible it says, ask and you shall what? Number one, you'd have to ask specifically, wouldn't you? 
We wouldn't ask in a general way. People do it all the time. They go, I want more money. Fine, here's a dollar, get out of here. Very often you're getting what you're asking for. You're just not aware of how general you're asking. Clarity is power. The more clear you are about exactly what it is you want, the more your brain knows how to get there. Make a choice, right? You just decide what it's going to be, who you're going to be, how you're going to do it. Just decide. And then from that point, the universe is going to get out your way. This concept of things just sort of falling into place. I'm, I'm a big believer in that, too. Yeah. What, what is that, though? Is that you getting out of your own way? Like, what, what is that? Is it... Isn't that 70% of it? Yeah. Yeah. I'd say it's 70% maintenance of what can I do to do my part to stay out of the way and then the other part I always think of it as like this little super thin uh, invisible thread but you can feel the tug and you just kind of you have to be really gentle and you have to pause when agitate you have to go for it when you're gonna like there's four walls in here which one has the map behind it you it's that one and you knock down the wall and it's there you know are you ready even if you are not ready for the day, it cannot always be night. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just tired today, man. Tired from what? You ain't done shit. And he didn't have enough energy to exercise. That's not but true. But it didn't look no, that's like not true. that. That's not true. He just didn't do it. No, I, I don't believe that. But when you say he didn't have enough energy to exercise, did he walk around? Well, yeah, did but you can drag yourself through things. And you can drag yourself through an exercise routine. You can. Mm. Oh, you most, you most certainly can. You most certainly can. You don't have to do a lot. You just have to do something. You stand around and watch all the opportunities go by. They sit there, they sit there. They, oh, I'm getting ready. Bert's getting ready. Bert's getting ready. Rick's getting ready. Oh, maybe, maybe the next one. Maybe the next one. Maybe the next one. Oh, fuck no, no, I'm tired now. Maybe the next one. Maybe the next one. And there comes somebody like me. Just jumps on the fucker and eats it. Maybe the next one, Ray. Who in this room is that male lion? And the truth of the matter is the female lion does all the fucking honey. Once you become fearless, life becomes limitless. No one's coming. No one's coming to push you. No one's coming to tell you to turn the TV off. No one's coming to tell you to get out the door and exercise. Nobody's coming to write the business plan for you. It's up to you. It's not up to other people. It's true. It's up to you. And you're so damn busy waiting to feel like it. And you're never going to. You've got to parent yourself. You've got to push yourself. You're not a procrastinator. You have a habit of procrastinating. Big difference. You see, all habits have three parts. There's a trigger. And in the case of procrastination, the triggers always stress. Then there's a pattern you repeat. And in the case of procrastination, it is to avoid doing something. And then there's a reward. You get a little stress relief. You're never going to get rid of the stress in your life. But you can 100% change your pattern of avoiding. When it feels scary to jump, Ian, that is exactly when you jump. Otherwise, you end up staying in the same place your whole life. And that I can't do. It's okay to not be okay. It's just not okay to stay that way. The one thing I know about emotions is that they change. Get up, because the best is still yet to come. May 26, 2003, Aaron Ralston was hiking. A boulder fell on his right hand. He waited four days. Then he amputated his own arm with a pocket knife. On New Year's Eve, a woman who was bungee jumping in Zimbabwe, the cord broke. She then fell into a river and had to swim back to land in crocodile infested waters with a broken collarbone. The most amazing part of these stories is when asked about the experience, they all smiled, shrugged, and said, I guess things could have been worse. So go ahead. Tell me that you're having a bad day. Tell me about the traffic. Tell me about your boss. Tell me about the job you've been trying to quit for the past four years. Tell me the morning is a townhouse burning to the ground. Tell me, tell me, tell me how blessed are we to have tragedy so small it can fit on the tips of our tongues. Uh, real quick, I want to give a shout out to Alex because um, you know a lot of people have a lot of excuses. Well, uh, Alex is paraplegic or if he's quadriplegic but he's in a wheelchair paralyzed and he is making it happen anyway he's not letting his excuses get him down and and you think about people being negative and people whatever yeah. look at this guy look at alex and uh, on, alex you know click on his page and there's nothing but positivity there and look whatever excuses you have 
you, you don't have what he's going through. Really a great way to get a different perspective on different parts of the world. When we hear jokes about first world, you know, first world problems people complain about, like my cell phone's not working too well, yeah. or it's just a different perspective. And so a lot of people's problems aren't really problems. They're just, just inconveniences. Yeah. Because they give up what they want most for what they want now. People don't fail because they're not talented or skilled or whatever. It's like you give up what you want most for what you want now. I don't care how good you are in anything. You don't have discipline. You ain't nobody. Right. You're nothing without discipline. Because you give up under the slightest struggle without discipline. 100%. The Marines have a saying, everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. But the center of bringing any dream into fruition is self Discipline. It's getting command of your mind to be able to choose actions that are in your own best interest. Ships don't sink because of the water around them. Ships sink because of the water that gets in them. Moral of the story, don't let what's happening around you get inside you and weigh you down. Simple. No, that's the biggest lie I was ever told. It's not that simple. And it's a lie they tell you over and over again. What's not simple? Any of it. All of it. It's how they get you to give up. They say it's not that simple for me. So what's the truth? There it is. He believed in himself. And you can too. Oh man, you're gonna put it on me like that? You can do anything that that you want. You can get you can get singing lessons, get a better job, make more money. <laughs> you could be even like rich. You could live in the White House someday. You could be president. <laughs> me? Do what you want to do. According to all known laws of aviation. There is no way a bee should be able to fly. Its wings are too small to get its fat little body off the ground. The bee, of course, flies anyway. Because bees don't care what humans think is impossible. And Shof taught me that the mind is like a factory, a mental factory. And whatever you think about all day long pours ingredients into this mental factory. And that's what builds the economic, social, financial fabric of your life. The first rule of success is to have a vision. You see, if you don't have a vision of where you go, and if you don't have a goal where you go, you drift around and you never end up anywhere. It's like you can have the best ship in the world, you can have the best airplane in the world. If the pilot or the captain doesn't know where to go, it would just drift around. It would not end up anywhere or most likely in the wrong place. You're going to be your habits and rituals. You better get a habit and a routine and rituals that serve you. Because if you show me what you're going to do, because here's why. Under pressure, you'll always go back to your habit. So you've got to have habits, rituals, and routines that serve you. Only the disciplined ones are free in life. If you are in discipline, you are a slave to your moods. You are a slave to your passions. It's your job to make yourself do the crap you don't want to do. Discipline is doing what you hate to do, but do it like you love it. <sighs> doing what you hate to do, but do it like you love it. And if you can do that, you can be successful in anything. You, know, you normally are. Rest at the end, not in the middle. Everything around us that we call life was made up by people that are no smarter than you. So build a life. Don't live one, build one. You have to master a new skill, but you're avoiding it because you know that you'll be bad at it when you first do it. And if you're perfectionistic, you're gonna say, well, I, I can't allow myself to be bad at anything. I can't allow myself to be a fool. And no wonder. But the problem is, is when you try something new, you're always a fool. And so unless you're willing to be a fool, you can't learn anything new. You are a fool when you first try something new, but you're a worse fool if you don't try it. If you are not willing to be a fool, you can't be a master. We have to, at some point, step into an arena that's foreign to us, that we don't yet understand. We have to be willing to operate with inadequate resources, trusting that you know they'll be picked up along the way. It is so hard to leave 
until you leave. And then it is the easiest goddamn thing in the world. Being on the edge of that cliff, it is terror, sheer terror. It is so hard to make that jump. I can tell you over and over again to leave the situation, but you won't. One day you'll wake up and you'll realize this isn't the way you want to feel anymore. And you'll be done. But then you do and it's like life opens up. You're blind to your own weaknesses, but you're also blind to your own strengths. Think about something huge that you want to do with your life that grips your heart, that makes you want to get out of bed every single morning that's massive and it should be right now, whatever just occurred to you, it's bigger than that. It's bigger than that. And make it big because that's going to be the compelling vision of your life. It's going to get you moving. Okay, that's a, and that is, and then lastly is don't listen to people that are going to tell you that you can't do it. Don't listen to haters. Don't listen to naysayers. Don't listen to people that give you advice that tell you to slow down or you shouldn't do it or you can't do it or the time's not right or any of those other things. Those are dream stealers. They were sent to you to see if you'll overcome them. They were sent to you to test your resiliency. You know why you can't tell it to everybody? Because if you want to kill a big dream, tell it to a small-minded person. And if you can overcome that, if you just discard all of that stuff and you get clear on those other things, you've got a really good chance of doing something great with your life. I once said I want to be a model, and they said, Bish you ugly you average you skinny zombie you unsymmetrical bish hell no bish go cry. Well bish, I'm exotic. No, 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 no. Don't let their bitch asses win. You have a good fucking heart. You're a good fucking person. You treat people well. You try to help if you can. Don't let somebody destroy that. There's people out there who would appreciate that far more than the people that you're allowing to have it. Just let them go. Bees don't waste their time explaining to flies why honey is better than shit. Just remember that next time somebody's trying to talk you out of your dreams. Why would the same measure affect people two different ways? Answer, it all depends on how you look at it. Our lives are mostly affected by the way we think things are, not the way they are. The way we think they are affects us most. You're a fucking asshole, dude. You're an asshole. You murdered yourself. You murdered yourself. You killed someone, that person happened to be you, but you couldn't even show up for yourself. You, you should figure out which story you're living, because you're living a story, and it might be a tragedy. People don't have ideas. Ideas have people. And so what Jung would say is that if you're living out a tragedy, the tragedy has you, you don't have it. And if you can figure out what the tragedy is that has you in its grip, then you have a fighting chance of escaping from it into a more pleasing plot. But it's no easy thing, you know, so if you're one of those people to whom the same terrible thing keeps happening over and over, after the third time, approximately, you might ask yourself, you know, is this the world or is this me? That poor thinking habits keeps most people poor. Not poor working habits. Most people work hard, but they don't think hard. Don't you quit. Don't you quit. As weak as you are, as tired as you are, as many mistakes as you made, you do make a difference. If you are still kicking today, battling those demons, you have something. Because a lot of people didn't wake up today because they couldn't make it. They couldn't cut it and you fucking did. If you're supposed to be at work on Friday, let's say at 7 a.m., 8 a.m., you're going to be there. If you work in a restaurant and your boss tells you to take out the trash, you're going to take out the trash. But when you tell yourself that you're going to start a YouTube channel on Friday, or when you tell yourself you're going to pivot in another direction September 1st, and you don't, why? You have to show up for yourself. You have to put your foot on the gas and go. The drive doesn't come first. There's a little person that talks to you, and that little person says, oh, I'm tired. My lungs are about to pop. Oh, I'm so hurt. I'm so tired. There's no way I could possibly continue. That person, if you learn how to defeat that person when you're running, 
You will learn how to not quit when things get hard in your life. You are not your thoughts. You know the thoughts that just pop into your head? That's not you. There is a space between the thought and what you do about it, which makes you a creator. But you can't just take the thought for gospel truth. Wait one beat between the thought and what you do about it and become the observer. And if it's just a raw emotion, don't assign a thought to it either. Don't give that emotion content. There are thousands of stories that you can assign to any emotion. When that thought or emotion just shows up, stop. Don't do anything. Just watch it. Your awareness of your anger is not angry. Your awareness of your fear is not fearful. Your awareness of your boredom, it's not bored. You're gonna die and you don't know when. You know this. And in a short 200 years, no one's gonna have any fucking idea who any of us were. So just in case you've forgotten, remember that. Hey, uh, something traumatic happened that changed my life, check. biggest mistake is you think you have time. Time is free, but it's priceless. You can't own it, but you can use it. You can't keep it, but you can spend it. And once it's lost, you can never get it back. You will spend your life completely wasting your time. You'll be doing things you don't like doing in order to go on living. That is to go on doing things you don't like doing which is stupid. Better to have a short life that is full of what you like doing than a long life spent in a... Are you a rich man? When you mean rich, what do you mean? You have a lot of possessions, a lot of money in the bank. Position make you rich? I don't have that type of richness. My richness is life forever. You think my problem is no arms, no legs. It's not. The fact is, I'm only going to die, I'm only going to live for 90 years. That's my problem. Isn't that your problem? Ladies and gentlemen, you got to understand that the reason that you are existing in this world right now is because you have things that must be done and only certain people are qualified to take it to the level that it needs to be taken to. It's hard to wait around for something you know might never happen. Come back, I still need you. But it's harder to give up when you know it's everything you want. This ladder stayed in the house yesterday. This ladder stayed outside. Right off the bat, this ladder looks better than this ladder. That's how we uh, view people. We don't take into consideration that this poor bastard stayed outside all night in the cold and the rain and all the other shit. And sometimes all you need in life is a little bit of help. So y'all don't be too quick to judge. We all go through shit. Be there for somebody sometimes. They may need you, and by God, you may need them. Y'all be cool. Stay classy. I love you.